Hello and welcome to Facebook Live. My name is Darlene Merkler and I'm with Inland Caregiver Resource Center. We're a nonprofit organization that offers free services for family caregivers and seniors. And I'm here on Facebook Live every Tuesday and Thursday with helpful hints and tips for family caregivers. Did you realize that today is the first day of February? I can't believe it. And February is National Heart Month. So I thought I would talk about heart health today. <clears throat> One of the things that we want to remember with our heart is to use up at least as many calories as we take in each day. So you have to start off by knowing how many calories you should eat and drink to maintain your weight. That's if you want to stay at the same weight. And you can Google those charts and it goes by your age and your height and tells you what you should weigh and how many calories you should eat each day to weigh that amount. So don't eat more calories than you know you can burn up each day. Increase the amount of intensity of the uh, physical activity to match the number of calories you take in. So the American Heart Association says, aim for at least 30 minutes of moderate physical activity on most days of the week. And most, most, best of all is 30 minutes every day. That's what the American Heart Association recommends. Regular physical activity can help you maintain your weight, keep off the weight that you lose, and help you reach physical and cardiovascular fitness. If you do at least 30 minutes at one time, you if you can't do the 30 minutes at one time like me, um, you can add up 10 minute sessions throughout the day. So for me, I take my dog on a 15 minute walk three times a day. And that is really good because it gives me a break from the computer. I get outside, I get some fresh air, some sunshine, vitamin D, and uh, my dog loves it. And it's good activity for me. And I walk for 15 minutes. So <clears throat> not everybody can do 30 minutes all at one time. If you want to benefit uh, from lowering your blood pressure or cholesterol, the American Heart Association recommends 40 minutes of aerobic exercise of moderate to vigorous intensity three to four times a week. Now, what about nutrition? We want to eat a variety of foods from all the different food groups. You may be getting plenty of food, but your body may not be getting the nutrients that it needs to be healthy. <clears throat> Nutrient rich foods have vitamins, minerals, fiber, and other nutrients but are lower in calories. So eating a variety of fruits and vegetables may help you control your weight, cholesterol, and your blood pressure too. So to get the, the nutrients you need, eat a dietary pattern that emphasizes fruits and vegetables, whole grains, low fat dairy, poultry, fish, and nuts. Be careful on the nuts because they do contain fat. And on the fruits and vegetables, eat lots of different colors of those, a variety. And while limiting the red meat and sugary foods and beverages, that's one thing we'll be aware of. Many uh, diets fit this pattern uh, and you can find them anywhere on the internet. But basically I've been on, I'd lost 37 pounds and basically uh, that was just in the last few months. And Basically, what I did was I ate more protein every two or three hours. I was going for long periods of time without eating. And so um, eating every couple hours and make sure it's protein and avoiding uh, carbs and sugar. <clears throat> and the uh, Department of Agriculture and the American Heart Association have lots of diets that they can recommend and also for people who have diabetes, they have recommendations for that. So we wanna eat less of the nutrient poor foods. The right number of calories um, is easy to consume each day, the right number, but you could be using up your daily allotment of calories 
on a few high calorie foods and beverages. That's what I was doing. I was going for a long period and then I was just grabbing whatever was available. So now I have, I plan it out each week what I'm going to have. And um, that makes a lot more sense when you plan everything out and you know what you're going to eat and you have the right foods in the house to eat. <clears throat> so you want to make sure that you're eating uh, the right foods that have the right nutrients for your body to stay healthy and limit foods and beverages high in calories but low in nutrients. Also limit the amount of saturated fats, trans fats and sodium that you eat. Uh, we have to get used to reading the labels on and the nutrition facts on our food because um, everything has so much sodium in it and trans fats. So the nutritional fact panel tells you the amount of healthy and unhealthy nutrients in the food or beverages that you're uh, going to get ready to eat or drink. So as you make your daily food choices, base your eating pattern on those recommendations. Well, and the, here's some other tips to listen to for that. Choose lean meats and poultry without skin and prepare them without adding saturated and trans fats to it. Eat fish at least twice a day. Recent research shows that eating oily fish containing omega-3 fatty acids, for example, salmon, trout, and herring, may help lower your risk of death from coronary artery disease. So select fat-free, 1% fat and low-fat dairy products and cut back on foods containing partially hydrogenated vegetable oils to reduce trans fats in your diet. To lower cholesterol, reduce saturated fats and no more than 5 or 6% of your total calories. So for someone eating 2,000 calories a day, that's 13 grams of saturated fat. Cut back on beverages and foods with added sugars. I try to just drink water. I keep this by my, <laughs> my desk all day. Choose and prepare food with little or no salt because a lot of things already have salt in it. So to lower blood pressure, Aim to eat no more than 2,400 milligrams of sodium per day. We have to really be conscious and pay attention to how much salt we're intaking. So reduce daily intake to 1,500 milligrams, and that's the most desirable because it can lower the blood pressure even further. And if you drink alcohol, drink in moderation. That means one drink per day if you're a woman and two if you're a man. And follow the American Heart Association's recommendations when you eat out. Usually a lot of the menus have the heart healthy symbol next to the food that is heart healthy. And also watch portion sizes when you're eating out. stroke and other health problems but this excess isn't just from adding salt at the table. Americans get most of their sodium 77 percent of it from processed foods. You know how they say shop on the outside of the grocery store that's because that's all the fresh fruits uh, vegetable fruits and vegetables and dairy products in the middle aisles is the processed food and all the processed food has lots of sodium in it. So we have to be careful about that. Look at the labels again. Also pile on the fruits and vegetables. Choose all kinds of fruits and vegetables. Eat lots of different colors, fresh, frozen, canned, juiced and dried. I was working with someone who was helping me with my weight loss and they said the frozen is just as good and sometimes better than the fresh because frozen, they freeze them right at the pink of peak of freshness. Whereas when you get some fruits and vegetables in the grocery store, they pick them before they're really ripe so that they'll last longer in the grocery store. So 
you can saute the vegetables and try a small a little bit of cooking oil with it um, for weeknight dinners or salad. I've been eating lots of salad, I, and I really have been enjoying uh, the dark green leafy uh, lettuce and spinach, lots of spinach in uh, my salads. And then, so like today I had um, tilapia on my salad because I'm trying to eat more fish. <clears throat> And then get the skinny on the fats. The fats have always been confusing to me, but um, you want to uh, learn how to substitute good fats. So that's the mono and polyunsaturated fats, um, not the bad fats, which are saturated and trans fats. That's what we want to stay away from. So, for example, try canola oil or olive oil instead of butter. Choose lean meats. Poultry without skin and fish instead of fattier cuts of meat like beef and pork. And enjoy heart healthy fats in moderation. And remember this tip, one teaspoon equals one serving. <clears throat> also cook at home because cooking at home is not only a great way to make sure that the ingredients are healthy, but your portion sizes are correct. Try using a small salad plate instead of a big dinner plate as well. Then you feel like you're not skimping on the food. So what about weight management? A lot of us, I think during COVID, we've gained weight. So we want to make sure that we burn more calories than we eat. Every good weight loss plan has the same two parts, food and physical activity. And the lady that I was working with told me that it's 80% of what you eat and 20% of activity. So the activity is, is important for your heart and for staying healthy, but the biggest part is what you eat. Again, keep portion sizes small, like maybe the size of your fist. Um, and uh, then there is an exception to that when you want it to be the size of a deck of cards. And that is um, lean meats, chicken and fish. For those, you want to keep the size, like the size of a deck of cards or half the size of your fist, and trim all the visible fats before you cook them. Plain vegetables include salads without dressing, and you can have as much as you want because these foods are nutritious, filling, and low in calories. So control your hunger, hunger with filling foods that are low in calories, foods such as low sodium soup, salads, fruits, and vegetables, can help fill you up without adding a lot of calories. And these foods will satisfy hunger and help you with your weight loss also. So keep track of what you eat. One of the things that I did when I lost my weight was I, every day, and I still do it, every day in my phone, I write down the time of the day and what I ate. And I eat every two to three hours, but I eat healthy foods. And also uh, with weight loss, you want to have physical activity. So regular physical activity is important for keeping your heart healthy also. So make sure that we're doing some of that, right? And you've all heard of BMI or, or body mass index. That's an indicator of the amount of fat that's in our body. It can be tested. Um, they have a special tool that they can test that with. But there's a certain range that you should be in for your height and weight. And your doctor can tell you, or you can Google that uh, to find out what your BMI should be. <clears throat> the American Heart Association recommends for overall cardiovascular health at least 30 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic activity at least five days a week. So, or at least 25 minutes of vigorous aerobic activity three days a week for a total of 75 minutes. Or a combination of the two. Moderate to high intensity muscle strengthening activity at least two days a week for additional health benefits and for lowering blood pressure and cholesterol, an average of 40 minutes of moderate to vigorous intensity aerobic activity three to four times a week. So I hope those tips are helpful for you. You know, uh, the exercise and eating right is also good for stress because stress is not good for our heart either. So I hope those tips are helpful for you. 
And I wanted to let you know that on Valentine's Day, I think it's a Monday, February 14th, I'm going to be giving an hour and a half presentation that was developed by the American Heart Association on heart health. And it's uh, different than the one I just gave now. And so if you're interested in that, call our office to register at 800-675-6694. Until Thursday, I'll be back with more Facebook Live. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>